hello hello film punks listeners coming to you live from tampa florida on this beautiful thursday afternoon i'm late there was traffic but i'm just at the film punks clubhouse by myself nobody here kicking it so bringing you today another editing session slash commentary on stuff slash whatever the fuck else I feel like doing today. And so, I'm going to go ahead and get things rolling here. Been working on a short film, doing some editing, among other things. Let's get... So let's get over to desktop and face cam. Here we go. All right, so this is on a uh, on our YouTube here. We got a comment from Don Joss. Hello, do you also make films? Well, we're called the Film Punks, uh, and you are literally commenting on a video where we're editing. And let's see, I have a short film I would love to share with you. You can just check Planeta Zine on our channel or simply send me a message to give you the link. Okay, stun just. I will go ahead and take a moment to check out your film. That was pretty loud. Okay, some interesting stuff here. Here it is. Planeta Zine. A documentary by an alien. Oh, okay, I like aliens. Alright, so we're gonna watch this together. Let me go ahead and cue this up. Oh, actually, I was already watching this a while ago. Start from the beginning. Let me pause the uh, lo fi hip hop. Let's see what we got here. Pētnieks, esmu vienmēr bijis ieinteresēts, kā dzīvība var rasties tik daudzveidīga. Manā pēdējā ceļojumā man bija iespēja izpētīt saudabīgu planētu un tās īpatnējo dzīvību, kas pievērsa manu uzmanību. Planēta Zeme riņķo ap savu tuvāko zvaigzni, un tās klimatiskie apstākļi padara šo vietu pilnīgu, lai dzīvība parādītos dažādos veidos. Visdominējošākās un intriģējošākās dzīvības formas ir Zemiš. Zemiš ir fascinējoši radījumi. Viņa pastāv aptuveni 75 gadus, un trešdaļa no šī laika viņa pavada guļot. Un tomēr Zemiš ir ļoti ieinteresēta radīšanā. Viņiem ir izdevies uzbūvēt iespaidīgas celtnes.
bet radīšanas dzinuls tur neapstājas. Zemiš ir izstrādājuši iekārtas, kas viņiem ļauj izplesties ārpus viņu fiziskajām iespējām. Zemiš uzvedās ļoti atšķirīgi viens no otra. Viņi ir sabiedriskas būtnes un ir grūti aprakstīt tos ārpus sabiedrības. Kā zemiš mīja darbojas ar citām dzīvības formām uz zemes? viņi pavada savu brīvo laiku. Kur viņi atrod laimi? Tas zemiš būtnes tiek trenētas priekš mehāniska darba. Tāpēc sociālās atšķirības ir tik milzīgas. Zemiš parādīja nevaldāmu atjautību un zinātkāri, kas viņiem palīdzēs saglabāt pareizo virzienu priekš autentiskas attīstības. Es paredzu pārtikuši nākotni planētai Zemi un ceru redzēt, kas Zemiš pūtnes pārskatīs savu sociālo struktūru. Okay, interesting. I dig the titles too. All right, so it's directed by Planet uh, Zima, directed by Bing Bang, Bing Bang, sorry, and uh, it's on the channel Stone Just. So I like this little short film. It's very. Uh, it's introspective from someone or the, a type of character who is literally not part of society but not a part of the human race. I like that view on it. And they're basically talking about how human beings look to them from the outside, wherever they are. So that was very interesting. And it was talking about how human beings you know, have a weird social structure, how they interact with the world. Creative. I like it, and a lot of the shots were pretty cool too. I like it. Uh, it was very effective when you put in the music and everything. Um, the long ass shot right there, but uh, it's effective as well. You know, it really is just showing more and more and more people, but it's like showing, you know, this is how big our society has grown and it's global and it's worldwide and you know it gets the point across so I dig that I don't know what they shot it on but it looks like some kind of DSLR some of these are pretty beautiful so I like the cinematography of it I like the use of these shots very eerie we kind of look like aliens <laughs> So this is cool, I like this. So I'll give it a like. And very cool short film. We enjoyed it. 
you know it was just me watching. Alright, so thank you Stone Joss for showing me that short film on your channel. And now, time to get to our stuff. Let me go ahead and start Premiere Pro up. Get my music going too. So, I had a package come in and I already opened it, but I'm gonna just do a uh, very fake unboxing. And what do I have here? It is a New Year light pad. Hang on one second. Why isn't the face cam working? Just this, okay. And I was good friends. And uh, so this is like a, a little light pad. It's meant to sit on top of uh, like a DSLR camera. It's by Newer. It's completely LED. So it looks pretty cool. Got a little hot shoe mount there. There's the light panel. And that's it. So my immediate complaint is that this light panel requires a battery pack that looks like it's supposed to come with it, but it doesn't come with the light. And it's not like you can put regular batteries in there. Like I can't put like double A's or triple A's or anything like that from the store. There's a specific type of battery that goes in this thing and it didn't come with the light so that kind of sucks let's see if it was supposed to come in the box I'll check it later but yeah now I can't see if this light is cool or if it's not cool I think it's cool it feels like it's pretty well made but see me a light no fucking batteries I can't plug it in either. Son of a bitch. Okay, oh well. Alright, come on now. So, let's get to it. Let's see here. Now my face cam is working. All right. So where we left off the other day was the scene where Johanna goes downstairs to answer the door. And it's her best friend, Felix. And he's beginning to tell her about his problems. Go ahead and switch this over to So I'm just going to switch over the audio from the speaker. So 
can hear it in my headphones now, which means you can hear it. How are you? All right, let me make sure I turn it down so it's not blowing everything out. I'm fine. How are you? I'm freaking out. Don't freak out. Okay. So we're in the assembly phase of editing, which means we get all the uh, clips together on the timeline to uh, just kind of see how the footage that we have is cutting together. And generally, we do a pretty good job when we're shooting of making sure that the shots that we shoot are going to cut well together. But every now and then you notice some issues that were not captured, such as the blowing out of these highlights. Although, to be fair, I think it was cloudy and then it, the sun peaked out at the wrong time or whatever, so I don't lay that completely at the feet of the shooters. And the audio that you hear right now is just scratch audio directly out of the camera. I actually helped shoot it. I was uh, the audio person. So the high quality audio, which I was booming with my boom mic overhead, it hasn't been synced yet. First, I'm going to just see what clips we would like to use in the overall cut of the movie. Then I'm going to sync the audio to those clips. And then we'll have our cut. And then we're going to mess with the coloring. We're going to mess with the audio further. Just make sure that it's as good as it can be. For a little while. And then we Hi. will... Joanna. Here we go. And then we're going to, uh, you know, go to, you know, further down the process, we're going to make sure we add in whatever special effects we want to use, add in our titles, all that good editing stuff, and then we'll finish another movie. So right now, we're going to need the shot of them going inside, coming back upstairs. You look better every time I see you. Come on up. Come on, let's go ahead and have some tea. So, in reality, there should have been, like, a pause here because the uh, conversation downstairs is a little weird if you don't know the characters. They are best friends. She is the stable one. He's more the one that's always getting into trouble and needing his best friend's help to get out. So, she's used to him showing up randomly saying, hey, I need help, you know. And, um, you know, it's the first thing that comes out of his mouth, so she feels... Hey, let's engage in conversation like normal, average adults, you know? Hi, good morning, how are you? And while he's trying to pull her into his situation, she continues on with the conversation that she feels they should be having. How are you? And he gets annoyed with it. I'm fine, how are you? I'm freaking out! Freaking out. So they're trying to pull each other into each other's... Uh, worlds she's trying to pull him into sanity and he's trying to pull her into insanity and so that's kind of how that exchange is supposed to go you know you look better every time i see you she's trying to hold it together come on let's go ahead and have some tea so i just feel that at the end of that we should have a shot of him just feeling like He's not getting through. I'm gonna push past looking for a better performance for now to just get to the next scene. Let's make sure we have something on the timeline for it. So we need ascending the stairs. I got a second screen over there, but I'm just gonna drag this over. So the footage I need is in day two. Check this folder here. Not that one. Wait for some of these. 
Cloud. All the stairwell stuff should be pretty much together. While I'm looking here, I wonder if there have been any good things I've seen on Netflix or in the movie theaters lately. It's not Jurassic World 2, Fallen Kingdom. It was uh, not great, but kind of knew it wouldn't be. You know, I'm not uh, pretty much expecting it to be a great movie at this point. I'm just going to the theater to see it because I'm a fan of the original Jurassic Park. I like the Lost World, Jurassic Park 2. I even like Jurassic Park 3. So it's just kind of like obligated to go just because you were a fan. So, you know, Jurassic World was kind of what I expected it to be. And so was Jurassic World 2. I'm going to go see the third one, man. Even though it's going to be like very formulaic and corporate and predictable. Just because, you know, don't have we don't get that many dinosaur movies. So... Where is my screen? Okay. All right, so I think this is the- Camera A red. All right, so we say red. Red means recording. It's kind of like a same thing as sh uh, rolling or speed. It's just a term we use to remind us to look for the red on whatever our device is. So red is pretty much on cameras, but it's also on audio gear too. So it reminds me to just make sure that my shit is recording. Let's mark it so we can sync audio. All right, so coming back in, this is the shot of them going upstairs. All right, action. That uh, Film Punks logo is normally there. We just forgot to take it down. We just left it. So how about this weapon? I don't know if they need to be rushing up the stairs. Unless she's trying to get away from him. Let me see. Audio. It might sound a little weird, but you know, the movie you write isn't always the movie you shoot or the movie you edit, you know. So sometimes things evolve and I'm just looking for those Camera A red. If they make sense. Red. Shot's almost over. Ascend the stairs. Oh, we lost audio. Motherfucker. Okay. Red. two shots of them going up the stairs and only one they actually went okay so there had to be another angle we'll go to Adam shots we shoot multicam so I mean there's a lot of footage to be used Tristan's cam didn't catch up except one good one Well, we don't actually need to see them ascending the stairs. Oh, wait. Because we have a, a shot of them crossing the living room after ascending the stairs. So that will work. So let me just check my options first.
sound of opening the door. Here we go. Whoa, look how shitty that footage looks. Look at that. Now they're going at the right speed, but that footage looks like total garbage. How did that happen? What happened to that file? I'm gonna have to check that file. Not sure how that could have ever taken place, but. Some movie. Movie file. So it looks like the file that came out of the camera, but that's not right if it's coming out looking like that. Let me check here. Maybe it's the uh, quality of the. So this will be full quality here. Better, but. So as long as I see a clear difference, it's okay. Yeah, it's the, so Premiere lets you view the file in a lower quality to just save you some memory and make editing a little more smooth, but your machine is a little slower. So I'm gonna put it back on half. Just to be safe, I'm gonna check right here in Media Player. It's okay in the media player. Looks way better so that dark isn't faded out like like in the thing. See that red dot right there? That right there is uh, permanent. It's in the camera. It's called a dead pixel. So if you've never seen it before, what it means is one of the pixels on the camera's sensor is actually fried. So it's not uncommon to see one or two if you have an older camera. It's okay. Uh, but they don't go away and if you ever get a camera and you wonder what those little dots are after you record then that's what that is is a dead pixel it's not a big deal you know shit's not perfect not at this level I'll tell you what is bugging me though it's uh, the fact that this footage is looking very fluid what I mean by that is it does not look like 24p which is what everyone should have been shooting in it looks like 30 Double check that. Now I'll see that frame rate 29 point. Yeah, so that's that's a faster frame rate, which means it's going to have a more fluid look. It looks more like news than movie, if you get what I'm saying there. Not cool, but uh, so that means somebody's camera wasn't set for a certain amount of time wasn't set correctly now I know we do setting checks in the beginning of a shoot and throughout the day just to make sure nobody's camera reset so we might have missed a couple shots so we can get away with this because there's not a lot of side to side movement there's lateral movement so it's harder to tell when it's lateral movement. But frame rate affects your motion blur. As does shutter speed. So let's see, we'll go with that shot. Let me just check these other ones real quick. Got a few of them. Some shit. 
shenanigans on set. Keep them going up. We need a little distance because he's supposed to have waited for a second. Also, uh, composition-wise, it makes more sense for one to be one side, one to be the other side, so that it looks... So you can see both of them in the frame. This looks a little bit... Let's see what this was. This is looking down. No, I'm not bipolar. <laughs> but it's not an actual shot. Kind of like that one. Probably gonna go with that one. And again, I haven't looked through all the shots. It's more or less just a. I'm more concerned with overall how the flow of the movie is gonna feel. And yes, you need real shots for that, but I'm gonna leave the heavy editing to someone else and just kind of get some things on the timeline to establish what the whole film is supposed to kind of be like. And I'm going to let the main editor decide which takes are the actual best takes. And I will help by matching up the audio. What we should have did was just line directly into the camera with my wireless setup or my uh, or like a direct line, but just to save ourselves this issue. We need to sync it. Okay, so I like that she's on one side. Let's see if he stays to one side. They didn't actually go in that. Okay. So I'm feeling like I already had the right one. Another good one I saw on Netflix, movie I saw was, uh... Hi! Joanna, I'm in trouble. You gotta help me. Saw 2. But, uh, not Saw 2. I saw 2. So, there's this movie called Tau, which if you're a fan of Ex Machina, which everyone should be, I love that movie, uh, this would be a movie that you would enjoy. It has AI, it's off in some special location, and the actual story and development of the characters is kind of interesting, you know? I would say that out of the two, Ex Machina is probably the better one. But the other one is, is not too far off. So if you like Ex Machina, it's pretty much the same subject matter. And I recommend it. It's called Tau, T-A-U. And it's on Netflix right now, streaming. So check that out. Go ahead and drop this one on timeline. Just so I have something there. Being the rough cut, why is he in the shot? Being the rough cut guy means you don't have to get it perfect. You just have to get it, get the idea right. Let's see. our shot here obviously the camera is turned a little bit so we have to adjust that they're running don't like the running but the part where she stops he also stops so I could cut it in from right there Take it to the living room right after that. Let's see how that works. Can't be afraid to experiment. Let's move this. Yeah. Come on, let's go ahead and have some tea. Uh, I kind of feel like it'd be better to just go to the living room shot. 
So let me just make sure I have my best foot forward just in case. And let's go living room. So that's Adam Cam. So our setup is we do three cameras at least. So there's usually A cam, B cam, C cam. We run as many cameras as we can at the same time to get as much ground covered as we can. Let's see here. It's a minute and 17 seconds. It's probably going to be the going down and coming back up. No, it's just going down. Let's see this one. Me coming back up. Here we go. So there's a thing about repetition where you don't want to repeat a shot unless you're revealing more information. So we already saw this shot earlier. So the question is, do you want the living room when she's coming through on her own or when she's coming back with Felix? I kind of like when she's coming back with Felix because when she gets up to answer the doorbell, we know where she's going. The next shot's going to be the door. We don't really need to see her travel the house. So I could just use this coming back. And uh, take out the one where she's going down to the living room beforehand. So I think that's what I'm going to do. That'd be better. Choice there. So from about right here. Right there, we cut it. Put that on the timeline. Clean up the other thing later. All right, so now we got them coming through. If we were gonna use that, I would cut it to about right here. So now it kind of fits. gotta go in earlier if you're gonna cut it makes sense to do to cut the second piece Oops. So this is right at the top of the stairs before the shot changes so that's consistent again Ignore the audio because that's not the real audio. That's just a scratch. Okay. So done with that. Now the next scene is they are in the kitchen having their conversation. So now it's time to get rid of this. Time to do a quick save. Now what I recommend if you happen to be a new Premiere Pro user is uh, when you go to set up your set up your program for the first time and you're getting all your defaults set your auto save for like five minutes uh, the way that we have it is we have auto save every five minutes so if power goes out or whatever whatever you did in the last five minutes it's usually easy to remember what what steps you took and it goes we uh, make sure that the scratch disk in other words where it saves is saved to the cloud and I only choose one version. So Premiere will let you choose multiple versions to keep, but I choose one because it goes to Google Drive and Google Drive will actually keep versions of files for you. So they actually back up the file themselves too. And now you can see kind of like the way our editing works is kind of pretty much the same approach as, uh, never mind. The way the editing works is anyone can access the uh, the Premiere Pro file that I just saved. So if they want exactly what I just did, they can open that file that was just went to the cloud right now, and they have what I just did. And they can import their own, they can import my rough cut to their timeline, which is gonna be the main cut. And then they can make whatever alterations they want. And uh, all, I'm, all I'm doing is messing with the rough cut. So their timeline stays the same. All I'm doing is making edits to the rough cut 
and uh, when they save or whatever, if I want to see, okay, well, they actually went with this shot so I can do some more stuff to help them, I can pull that down from the cloud. All right. And God forbid, if anything happens to all your equipment and stuff, then, you know, you can always download it again from Google Drive. But what you can't download from Google Drive, unless you've paid for a massive amount of storage in this case, is uh, all the footage. So that we keep on a hard drive here, and it's linked to everyone else's hard drive who's keeping a copy of the project. So not only do you need the Premiere profile, but you need the, a copy of the footage. So everyone who's editing, it's synced with uh, Resilio Sync, which keeps our hard drives in, in, a, in sync. So if I add new footage or whatever, they get it immediately. That way they always have the footage that Premiere Pro is saying, hey, this guy used these, this footage, where is it? It will know where it is if they have it. All right, let's go to see if we can do some kitchen footage. So I'm going on till about 7.30. What time did we start? I can't remember. But let's get to the talking head scene as a lot of people refer to it. I don't believe in that term. I don't like that term. I don't think that there's such thing as a talking head scene unless I think what they're saying is you're not using enough shots and it's just back and forth between two close-ups too much. What we do to deal with that is we, we know that scientifically the human eye and the human brain absorb everything that's visually expressive in any shot, no matter what it is, within 12 seconds. So that means that whatever shot you have, like this wide shot, I don't want it to be on screen for more than 12 seconds. I can do three seconds here, four seconds there, come back to it, but I don't want the total time of it to add up to more than 12 seconds because now the shot becomes redundant. And if a shot becomes redundant, if the human eye has already absorbed all the visual information, so what happens is the person's eye wanders and if they're watching it on their computer, they're looking at, oh, what are these other suggested videos I might click on? Oh, well, what else are these uh, notifications that I could be looking at? You don't want that. You want them to stay engaged. So having a, a variety of shots is a must. You really do need to have that. You can't have the same shots for like five minutes in a scene. You gotta have new shit being exposed to the human eye all the time. Let's see, you go overboard with that, but we, we generally understand, you know, the basic principles of cinematography, so we're not gonna do that. Okay, let's go to the kitchen. So that's gonna be scene one, day one. Tristan's our A-cam, so he usually is focused on the A character, and then B-cam is usually focused on the B character. That's one way we like to divide up shots for multi-cam shoots. Another thing that we can do is sometimes people like shooting certain type of shots, so like we'll do the wide angles for a certain kind of camera, or whoever's got the widest angle lens, that's the way that we uh, divide up shots, but it really depends on how we feel. Okay, so let's start with the part where they're sitting down. Audio. Audio red? Am I in? No. Let's figure out. Let's get a master. I want a master of a shot that we can cut back to. It's probably going to be this medium here. It's medium single. Red. Ninja shot 10. Red. Oh, is there a 50-50? Maybe we go to the 50 50 first. First, I gotta stop this thing from recording or playing. Okay. Let's see if we got a 50. I want a shot with both of them. It's later on in the movie for some of these shots. I think I'm gonna go for 30 more minutes and I'm gonna go get some eat. Motherfucker, what's going on? Hang on. Goddamn connections getting a little fritzy. There we go. 
Still there. Okay. So let's see here. So I'm looking for a 50 50. Adam had the widest shots. So let's go to Adam's cam. So this one looks like a long. Okay, so here we got a medium shot. I would say 50-50. It's a little bit more subjective towards her because we're angled from the right side facing her more than we're angled from the left side facing him. And the middle would be a totally objective 50-50 two shot. So let's see here. So let me know to fast in an hour. Camera A still rolling. That means that I should eat my last meal before 8.30. And I'm doing this thing where I try to eat all my food within a certain 10 to 12 hour window. So I do 10 hours. I you know, at the latest, I'll do 12 hours. So, like, if I wake up at 8 a.m., that means I've got until 8 p.m. to eat and consume food. It's supposed to be more healthy for you. Go figure. But, uh, let's see. Kill the fan. Tristan, camera A still rolling? Rolling. All right, just stand by. Again goal here is to establish flow so I'm going to cut this as if I have the perfect audio I want to establish a rhythm of cutting from shot to shot let's see here and get the shots that have the closest uh, exposure consistency audio right, not audio but consistency and everything I want consistency of everything so that when we match these shots as far as color correction and grading there's not a lot of work to do if something looks vastly different from another shot then it's probably not a good idea to select it Okay, some things are going to be an issue with this shot. Some technical things like the computer not being on yet. So, by process of elimination, I have to move this along. I'm sure they redid this take, redid the scene. So, so let's look for the movement where she's pouring in tea again. Oh wait, I think that's all one take. Okay, well let's assume I use a different shot before that computer turns on. That means I can go as far back as here, right here. Matt thinks this place is haunted. I don't believe in ghosts, but people who do kind of make you look over your shoulder sometimes. You know? They seem pretty convinced, and it's like, what has you so convinced? Even though, hey, 
I know ghosts and spirits and all that shit don't exist. It's just kind of gets to you, gets to the back of your head. Let's see here. It's moving here, I don't like that. What if we start here? Let's pretend we already got this shot. Three seconds of this shot in the beginning, right? So we not we're not worried about whether the computer is on. Let's let's assume we are now cutting in where the computer is definitely on. Question. We need a shot. We need this shot, but we just need to know when to use it. Wait, what's this? You moved a blah blah blah. So he's trying to explain to her that he's gotten himself in debt to a drug lord. And she's just being kind of cavalier about it. So if we cut back to this, I think that this shot is kind of backing out of the craziness and just kind of looking at things more objectively. So this is an objective shot. So if you look at this objectively, you understand how crazy he sounds on this side of the room and how sane she looks on this side of the room. And then this action here where she just takes a sip of her tea while he's trying to explain it to her just kind of puts the punch on that point. So I think that when we come back to the shot, it'll be around this time. Let's assume we cut it there, and we use as much that we use the teacup. Let's start with her leaning in. All right. Drop that on. Okay. So we're going from this scene. Here. Now there is a part where they sit down, but I'm not worried about that yet. That's a connecting shot. When we shoot, we kind of look at things similar in that way too, because what we'll do when we shoot is we, we, we start with this, the part where they're already sitting or having a conversation, and we film the dialogue first, and then we film the parts where they're walking into the scene or they're walking up to where they're supposed to be, because those usually are the the shots that take a longer time to shoot so we do those last we do every shoot that we do in four hours or less it's kind of a film punks rule every shoot four hours or less and so that keeps us sharp let's see here because we we shoot for free i mean we're not getting paid to do this this is kind of all for experience for credits so when you're working with everyone on free time, you kind of want to keep it limited. That way, people don't feel like they have to take off a full day of work because they know they're going to be doing a shoot that's only four hours long. So they can either shift their schedule to be in the beginning or afterwards, or it's just easier to deal with rather than a 10-hour, 12-hour day. 
our shooting tour. Fun. And we get a lot done by running three cameras at the same time. Let's see here. Okay, so I have that. Let's go to some singles. Is there harder to find? Oh, that's a still. There's going to be always less shots of actor B than actor A because B, by definition, is less important than A. He's the second lead. She's the first lead, so. In red. All right, I'm going to hope that he doesn't look at the camera too much. Ninja shot 10, red. Kind of his, kind of his character to be kind of dirty. A little bit skittish but the looking at the camera is a little problematic and it's just because he hasn't been on screen in a long time Brad, time for your face. last time we worked with him was a few years ago and he is naturally a little skittish so i'm gonna save him to those moments when he looks at the camera. I'm going to cut. I'm going to make sure that that doesn't make it in. Let's see. So what he is doing really well is he's got a focus and his reaction is being true to the moment that's happening to the character. His friend is not really listening to him and he's a little bit worried. where he looks at the camera. I'm going to cut that. Let's, uh, that goes beforehand. We'll put that here. So what I'm also looking for right now is what looks good, what's visually pleasing, and I want to put the best stuff on the timeline to persuade or encourage the real editor to use the shots. Let's see. Well, let's see if we went beyond that, if there were any good moments. Okay, so this is a dirty close-up. You've got like a T2 on him, it's the shoulders up, and you've got a piece of her. That's why it's technically dirty. That's me on set, actually. <laughs> I could hear the other actors in the other room kind of being on my microphone, so I could tell them to be quiet. Okay, so uh, these are some of his better moments here. He smiles at weird times, which I, you know, us knowing him, it's not weird for us, but I guess an audience would wonder if it's intentional or not. We don't want uncertainty with any technique, whether it be lighting, camera, acting. We don't want uncertainty. We want them to know. Okay, Grant. Grant. So I think from granted. Notice why you're still here. So he shakes his head. It's probably going to be his better moment there. Okay, granted. But this is big. Okay. I'm is he looking at the camera or her? I think he's looking here at the camera. I'm in major trouble. Well, 
I am in. If it's consistent. In to, to, to and he said, if I don't pay him back by this afternoon. That's definitely her. Here's her. It looks like him. It looks like the camera. We are right behind her head. Maybe it's not a big deal. I'm going to assume it's not a problem. And he said, if I don't pay him back by this afternoon, he said, I'm dead. So, I don't need all that. All right, so from here to there, there are enough good moments. And the bad moments we can cut out. If they, are, if they are bad moments. I'm not going to be the judge of that right now. I'm just going to say that I like this composition. That there's good symbolism. He is very childish, so I kind of like the, the fact that these were well placed. We do have that emptiness there between them, but and I can't say that that's intentional, so... Anyways, let's put that on the timeline. Let's just see where does it go before, after. Anytime you uh, define a specific part of a clip here, you can always just hold this down and grab it and pull it down. And it uses the part that you define rather than the whole clip. Let's get some moments of her close up. So. Shot 12, red. For every shot, there's a matching shot. This is a matching, matching dirty close-up. Oh my goodness, Lakimo sounds like she's asleep behind the camera. So after he adjusts is where we want to start. You gotta stop moving that camera, Adam. He's adjusting focus. So he's supposed to say adjusting focus. Thank God she couldn't remember her line. Dude, please tell me you stopped moving that camera. So the problem with a moving camera is if you're cutting from this moving shot to another shot that's more stable, it's a little jarring and you don't want that. It's kind of inconsistent. Favorites. Our best friendship has been tested on countless occasions. Now you can make an argument for it being, you know, an artistic choice, you know, s symbolically speaking, when you're looking from his perspective, things look shaky. And when you're looking from her perspective, things are more stable. If her shots are more stable, I'm not sure. I did not see this happening on set. I was focused on the audio. Look at that. It's a lens in the back. <laughs> fucked up. So, let me just scrub through, see if this camera gets more stable. It looks shaky. So I'm probably gonna just gonna warp stabilize this. To see how much it affects the frame, because usually it crops in a little when you stabilize it. I'll be right back. Don't come your pee. <laughs> kind of a funny line. So we have an obvious color palette here, you know. We got a bunch of green in her kitchen, so she's supposed to be like a green type of person, vegan, all that stuff, healthy, work from home type of person, and they're not far off from each other, you know, as far as, you know, the type of people they are, they are. Well, actually, I can't say that he eats as healthy as her, I don't think that's his character, but they're best friends, so, you know. You gotta show the closeness in a way. So he's an off different type of green. 
Visually speaking. Chat 12, bread. See those earrings? That's not a good idea, ever. They look nice on her, but... I am almost certain she was not wearing them in a bunch of the shots. They're easy to forget, you know. So I always say never wear earrings. So... Here's the value of this shot. The reaction of her to everything he's saying. We can use this. I'm in major trouble. Up until he starts leaning into the shot, that is. Let's go back. And this kind of shows her character. So she's always getting him out of trouble. You know, every week or every day it's something new, but it's nothing that she can't handle. So she's overconfident. She's kind of cocky in a way. And I'm seeing that in the way that she's listening to him. So she's listening, but she's ignoring him. So I'm going to drag this onto the timeline, but what I'm wondering is how it will be affected by the stabilization. So let's go ahead and look at Premiere Pro's built-in stabilizer called Warp Stabilizer. Let's just drop it on here. And it already has some pre-settings, so I'm just going to see how they affect if we just go with the pre-settings. And if, they, if I'm not satisfied with how it looks, then I'm just going to tweak it a bit and just see if it's acceptable. If it's not acceptable, I will leave a note for the other editor to, you know, think about using a different shot. If there's another shot. I'm gonna make sure there's another shot before I leave him an idiotic piece of advice. So editing controls are usually up there. I'm gonna put them in tab two. And I'll let you know how far along you are. So it's 37, 59%, it's almost done halfway so let's see if anything else is going on in the world of filmmaking while that's happening let's see here let's go to uh, Facebook let's go to Tampa Film Network So there's a filmmakers meetup this weekend, Saturday at 6 p.m. at Curtis Hickson Waterfront Park, Tampa, Florida. So if you happen to be a resident, you might want to stop by that. Let's just see what details of that are. It's posted by Marcellus something. What was his name? It's posted by Marcellus. Antoine Ruffner. So Saturday, 6 p.m. I got class until well, get out at five. So 5:45 I get out, so I can go right from there to this. Um, six people say they're going. Usually it's like a third of that, and then 38 interested. You can rely on no, 10 to 15 percent of those people. Um, Probably about eight, ten at most. So that's there. And then the about is aft attention for local filmmakers and media creatives. Come out and enjoy the sunset out our no pressure. Meet and greet. Network is key in the growing media driven industry, hosted by Woke Films. Are you woke? <laughs> Meet, greet, shoot footage, talk about projects and help each other thrive in an amazing industry all welcome actors directors editors audio heads 
musicians, performers, artists, grips, operators, blah, 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 professionals. Yeah, I might check that out, maybe. Um, I don't usually go out in public that much. You might see why. People get suspicious. People get suspicious. So I think it's done. Let's let it play. Now, alright, so the default settings on the warp stabilizer uses a method called subspace warp. And I don't know what that really means technically on a ones and zeros level, but the effect that it gets is shit looks warped. So it's smoother, you can see that, but you see the space kind of warping around there? I don't like that. So what you can do is if that's not cool for you, you can select another method. I think this would be okay if there was movement, like if this were a follow shot and you were trying to stabilize a follow shot, because the camera is moving up and down a little bit, you would expect the, the space to warp a little bit or you might not notice it as much. But when you're sitting, I don't think this is the best method. So I think position is what you want. Now what position does is it just crops. It goes to it goes inside of the edges that are shaking. It leaves that out and it just kind of stabilizes it as best it can from that way. Let's see how that looks. It kind of works. And that's 50%. If I want to smooth it out more, I think it'll crop in. Let's go to 100 and just so you show you the difference. All right, so this is before the stabilization. After. That's not a bad crop, actually. Let's see how smooth it is. Wonder how you're still here. So what I'm losing, though, is a piece of his head. There really wasn't a lot of it in there to begin with, but... I have this more smooth. Okay, so he comes into the shot and it's okay from there. So it's a single that becomes a dirty close up. Drug Lord. I like the smile, I like the staring, I like the looking down for a second. All of these say that what you're really saying is not impo that important. It's a little condescending, it's a little bit overconfident, and it fits. That's what the subtext of the scene was. So it works. Now, I want to I want to see how it plays when we render it. Let me go and make sure it's saved. Go ahead and render that red and just see how it plays. And while that's happening, visit Check around Instagram. I'm kind of addicted to it right now. It's like Instagram. First thing I do when I wake up is I go on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. I just kind of see what's happening. See what everybody's posting. It's Florida Film Academy. And I'm the one in the group that likes fighting. So I like MMA and I like kickboxing. So I, I'm the one that kind of follow these other sh things. John Williams got a film coming out. Oh shit. I've worked with him once or twice. Artificial Infatuation. John Williams directed by Kenneth Timber.
Al Hober. Let's see if we can get the rest of this out. I know Kira worked on this too. So it's got Brian Roller in it. It's got Kevin Pace, Sean Collins. Oh, that's a familiar name right there. Kelly M. Carmack. Introducing Justine Valentin. Valentine or Valentin, I'm not sure. Cool poster, I like it. It's a little retro, but I like it. Let's see what we got here. Oh shit, 48 hour win uh, film fest. That's Wicked Window. Our local group as well. Jared Lee Sachs Miller there, Gentleman of Cinema. He's always doing these cool tunes and shit that goes with his work. His last big thing was Raised on Media, so let's see here. That's the character that Hannah Young plays. What the fuck was her name? Uh, I know it. It was, uh, because I even remember working with Melissa. What the fuck? It was uh, something Sewell, but I think they changed it to sound more Asian. I'm not sure. Anyway, oh yeah. So Kira Howell is in this. Let me see what her credit was. She was production designer. All right. So she's worked with Film Punks. Not really an active member right now, but I always like to see what people do when they leave. Let's see. So Florida Film Academy, it's been doing some cool shit. Let me see here. They teach film school for kids. I love seeing the young kids doing shit. Let me see here. Kind of working with the green screen. Got to work with some handy cams. They're doing lighting. They're learning that shit. Oh, hang on. All right, so it's done rendering. There's a little stutter in there, but it's negligible, really. You don't even have to use the whole shot. You just kind of cut that out. Drug Lord. Let me see if this extends to anywhere we might want to use it. Because when it becomes unusable is when his head blocks her. Let's see how much of this we can actually use. Yeah, it gets unusable right about there. Really here. So I had it right last time. Let's undo. Okay. All right, so to make that scene work, I'm also looking for, oh shit, it's almost time to go and get some dinner. Uh, I can pick this up later. But I'm also looking for, I got a master, I want a second master. So the goal here, I guess, for anybody watching, just wondering what the editing technique is here, is I'm looking at shots that I think are composed well, are lit consistently, consistent exposure, uh, consistent with, the, with good performance that we can use. And then the reason I want more than one master is, remember that thing I said about 12 seconds per shot? So here's a good master that covers the whole scene, but I don't want to shoot the I don't want to show this whole scene from that one shot, right? So I want to see if there's another master. Let's see. Is it about to rain? It's like golden hour. You know how it is in Florida? Rainstorms pop up out of nowhere. All right, let's see. find one more shot that I like uh, we could use the OTS a uh, wide shot how about that but we need everybody in there that's me I'm gonna show my face even the group doesn't know what I look like actually they do
it's always like a weird reaction like it's like oh you're like a regular dude like yeah what were you expecting i guess some people think i have like some weird scar or something i'm covering up like takashi or something although he's not covering a scar he's got a scar on his eye but it, i guess he covers his eye when he's not fighting anyways but that guy's like good looking underneath i think it's the idea me i'm just regular probably look better with the mask on to be honest <laughs> gotta fuck it up I'm throwing shade on myself <laughs> Oh man, so Joe, this guy is a fucking beast. He's a master. He is so understanding of story structure and subtext and things like that. Here we go. All right, so it's not a, sh a change of the frame here that this is a master of the second part where she has a conversation with Joe on the phone. So he's a crime lord. So what she thought was she would distract Felix. He would get up and walk away, leave his phone on the table. Because she's just clever like that. And she was just going to pick up his phone and solve this problem just by calling the drug dealer directly. Felix, true to character, has the drug dealer's name under the contact name Drug Lord, right? So she easily finds his number, she calls him, she pretends to be his mother and that she wants to just settle things. But she gets herself dragged into this mess deeper with him and she uh, is surprised to find out like this isn't some silly situation, it's a real situation on the other, on the other end of that phone. And she ends up, she ends up really afraid because it's it's serious okay let's see let's see if we can get it where he walked away so it's kind of a slick thing where she reminds him that he needs to go to the bathroom or something like that and he walks away and she picks up the phone at just about the same time so it's kind of like obvious that she's tricking him not the way she didn't look at the contacts she just put it to her ear what the hell I'm sure we have a take where she actually looked at the phone let's see this one let's see what's going on in this shot Check and white balance there. This shot is kind of ugly. It's like back to the camera. There's nothing going on on the screen. Nothing over here. Nothing. No inf important information is being exposed. And it looks like just a poorly staged. I'm throwing shade on whoever was behind the camera here, but I don't like that shot. That sucks balls. Sorry. Alright, so let's go Tristan. Let's go Tristan camera. Let's see what he's got. Let's see what he's rocking with. Hold on, he was the one who shot in 30 frames per second, so I need to see if that was just for that one time on the staircase or now this is day one, that's a different day. Let's see if this one is a good frame here. So, Felix, this is a terrible shot. Uh, 
Please, some more enthusiasm next time, King. You're depressing me. Uh, uh, what the fuck is that sound? In front of your face slowly. Nice. Good to go. And. So now you can see, while this camera's shooting, we got this camera. And you remember the camera that was shooting this way, right? That was kind of shaking, and I had to stabilize it. That's one, two, plus this. So this camera here is either C cam or we call it ninja cam. What a ninja cam does is they they typically are like just looking for shots that are creative that other people have not or things that camera A, B, or C haven't gotten. So ninja cam just does whatever they want. They're not on the shot list. They just look for creative things like inserts, you know, creative shots of maybe a, a clock on the wall, something that we can just cut to. And they just find more expressive ways to, you know, enhance the film. I don't think this was a particularly... And ready, ready? I don't think this was a good angle. It's looking down on her. If anything, we should be looking down on him from her perspective. Because that's what she's doing, but... Now looking up at her, that works. If we're, if we're focused on her and it's a perspective thing, looking up at her makes sense and looking down at Felix makes sense. Felix is the dumb one, she's the smart one. Felix is the one who's in trouble, she's the one who's always got her shit together. Let's see. And in three seconds. Felix. Hold on, man. Why is this camera moving so much? I got a piece of Adam's leg in this camera. What the fuck? It's a good ain't. This is a good frame right here. I like this. Red. Nin but I have movement. Ninja shot ten. Red. So that's Tim on Ninja Cam. Clap in front of your face. That's why it's shaking. Red. Tim doesn't usually shoot ninja. He doesn't shoot handheld either. We ran out of monopods. Red. Clap in front of your face. Nice. We are good to go. And action whenever you're ready. I guess he's on a monopod. It's not shaking up and down. Here. Have some tea. He's holding the. He's holding the stick too tightly. That's why it's doing that. It's shaking with the movements of his hands. What he should be doing is holding the, the stick with the tip of his fingers so that his body moves shaking has less impact on a camera. So a single of her, this. we can use that, but it has to be stabilized. Let's try this shot above it. That looks like a longer take. Are you? Oh, that's an eight second take. an OTF. Oh, that's it. This has time on it. What the fuck? That's an image. That's an image with four seconds of data on it? Red. It's weird. Let's see this here. Red? I don't like this shot. It makes no sense at all. Can't see his face. It's from his back. We're not getting any new info from this here or anything else. I'm not going to throw shade. They're, at least they're looking for stuff. Red. Ninja shot 10. Red. Let's see if there's anything I like here. I like the leaning back. It just shows confidence. Her ability to deal with it. So he's got a lot of explaining to do. I guess we don't want to stay on that that same shot that we stabilized on her too much. So we would cut from that shot to this one. Let me go to the end of it. I wouldn't want the part where it moves or has its hand. So right there to. Right about the part where we can see the edge of the camera in the frame there. So near to there. Okay. We'll put it right next to that shot of her 
doing that. That way we know that you can cut from that shot to this shot. Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna do right now. I can do some more when I get back from eating. I'm hungry. But um, yeah, I'm supposed to start fasting in 15 minutes. So yeah, all right. So that's all I got for you guys. Uh, if you're watching, if you got any questions about editing, Premiere, this project, the film punks, me, uh, feel free to message us. You know, you can reach us through the comment of this video through our Facebook fan page. It's the film punks everywhere you go. If you if you Google the film punks, you'll find us. Our website is thefilmpunks.org. Our Facebook page, the film.